These not-so-famous Nordic serial killers made their mark throughout Scandinavia as well as Finland and Iceland. While the United States is considered the serial killer capital of the world, there are many little-known serial killers across the globe. While these names may not be familiar to you, the killers in this video terrified their home countries with their various reigns of terror. Dagmar Overby was a Danish woman born on April 23, 1887. Based on the crime she committed, it's hard to place her in any other category besides pure evil. Overby lived in Denmark and worked as a child caretaker. In 1912, she gave birth to a daughter of her own, and in 1915, she moved from the small village of Assendrup to Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, she opened and operated a business where she acted as the go-between for families looking to adopt and mothers of unwanted babies. As this middle woman, she would care for the children while she found proper homes for them. Mothers who had children outside of marriage used this unofficial adoption agency, handing over money and their newborns to overbuy. What these women didn't know was that their infants would never be placed in the happy homes of loving families. Between 1913 and 1920, Dagmar Overby murdered as many as 25 children placed in her care, one of which was her own. She either strangled, drowned, or burned them to death in her masonry heater. Then she either hid the cremated ashes in her stove or buried the corpses. Almost as terrifying as the crimes themselves, the discovery of the atrocities was essentially by chance, meaning Overby came very close to getting away with these crimes. She would only be found out when a young mother named Caroline Agason placed a classified ad in the paper as she had just given birth to an illegitimate daughter and was looking for a family to adopt the child. Overby came across the ad and contacted Agason who paid Overby and left her daughter with the killer. It would be the following day that Agason regretted her decision to give the baby up. When she asked for the child back, Overby said that she couldn't remember the address of the family. This aroused suspicion in Agason and caused her to report the incident to the police. Officers would soon arrive at Overby's apartment, located in the Vesterbro district, and search it. First, they found the baby's clothes. Then, they discovered the grim remains of her bones and skull in the stove. An officer that worked the case, Paul Feldgard, stated in an interview 86 years after the event that he recalled opening a cupboard to find tiny burnt bone fragments. Obviously, Overby was arrested, after which she admitted to murdering 16 children Despite her confession, she was only convicted of murdering nine due to a lack of evidence. In 1921, she was found guilty and given the death penalty, making her the first woman sentenced to death since 1861. However, the reigning monarch, Christian X, was against the death penalty for women, saying that in an enlightened Denmark, we don't put our women to death. Thus, her sentence was commuted to life in prison. The trial was one of the most talked about at the time. It was also noted as a historical one in the Danish history because it placed a major focus on child care legislation. It recognized that unwanted children were a responsibility of the government. In 1923, as a direct result of the Dagmar Overby case, the Danish government passed a law regarding foster children which required the establishment of public homes for children born out of wedlock. Arnfinn Nesset was born on October 25, 1936, and is a Norwegian former nurse and nursing home manager, as well as a convicted serial killer. His crimes include the murders of at least 22 people, as well as attempted murder, document forgery, and embezzlement, and it's believed he may have murdered up to 138 people. Born in Trondelag in 1936 out of wedlock, Nesset was raised by his mother. He remained with her throughout his upbringing and adulthood and lived at her childhood home. 
His father was absent from his life and never established contact with him. He was educated as a registered nurse and by 1977 had been hired as a head nurse at a larger nursing home in Orkdal Sor Trondelag. During the summer and the autumn of 1981, a series of suspicious deaths was uncovered at the nursing home in Orkdal in which Nesset was the manager. When questioned by police, Nesset initially confessed to the murders of 27 patients whom he claimed to have killed by injecting them with succimethonium chloride, a drug used to paralyze muscles. He was charged with 25 counts of homicide but later retracted his confession and denied all charges for the rest of his five-month trial. Nesset was convicted in March of 1983 of poisoning 22 patients. He was also convicted of one count of attempted murder and acquitted on two other counts, though it's believed that Nesset may have killed as many as 138 patients. Nesset would eventually be sentenced to 21 years in prison, the maximum term then available under Norwegian law, to be followed by 10 years of preventative detention. Shockingly, he was released after serving only 12 years of the sentence for good behavior. He is now reported to be living in an undisclosed location under an assumed name. Peter London was born in Solrod Strand, Denmark in 1971, but his family migrated to the United States when he was seven years old. In April 1991, London strangled his mother to death in Maggie Valley, North Carolina and with the help of his father, he buried her body on a beach at Cape Hatteras, where it was found eight months later. In 1992, London was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment for the murder. His father, Ole London, was sentenced to two years as an accomplice. While serving this sentence, Peter London was interviewed by Danish television in 1994, with his face painted partially black and white and quoting a poem on the light and dark sides of life. After viewing this interview, a renowned Swedish psychologist, Sten Levendar, awarded London 39 points of a possible 40 on the psychopathy checklist. In 1999, London would be released from prison for capacity reasons and deported back to Denmark. After returning to Denmark, London moved in with his wife in Malove, but she kicked him out when he became violent with her. He soon met a woman named Marianne Peterson while visiting a brothel. Peterson and her two sons, who were living in Radove near Copenhagen, were declared missing on July 3, 2000, and London initially claimed that they had left on vacation and he had agreed to paint their house. Police discovered blood traces in Peterson's car and in the basement of her house on July 5th, and London was promptly arrested. Further examinations of the house led to the conclusion that Peterson and her sons had been killed and dismembered. The detective in charge of the investigation, Niels Zoller, on the Hadover Police Department, described the basement and garage of the house as resembling a slaughterhouse. The discovery of human tissue revealed that London had used an angle grinder, and more than 100 visible markings on the floor revealed that he had also used an axe. Three weeks later, London changed his statement, claiming he heard screaming on the night of the crime and discovered that Peterson had killed her sons. He claimed that he had found her passed out on drugs and fatally hit her, after which he dismembered the bodies. He claimed to have withheld this information because he knew the police wouldn't believe him because of his criminal past. Though on October 10, 2000, London once again changed his statement this time admitting to the murders. He admitted to first killing Peterson because she had been talking sweetly to a man on the telephone on the night between June 16th and 17th, then killing her sons. All three died of broken necks. In 2001, a jury sentenced London to life imprisonment for the crime. In spite of extensive searches, the dismembered bodies have never been found. London's father, Ole, was sentenced to four months in prison for the theft of items owned by Peterson. Peter London was found not to be insane. He initially served his sentence in her Stedvester prison in Albertsland near Copenhagen, but was later transferred to a new prison near Horsens. <laughs>